What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you never miss an episode of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Jose Barrios, who's really been struggling, but he did have these nasty breaking balls and this pretty front door two-seamer. He gave up four earned runs and is off to a very slow start again this year. But the stuff is there in flashes. Johnny Brito went five innings, giving up only one run, and had these pretty change-ups. Joe Ryan had 10 Ks in six innings, but he did give up four runs on only three hits. He had this painted fastball, this sword on an elevated fastball, and this absolutely beautiful pitch clock violation. It doesn't get any better than this. I mean, look at the way he stands there. Fantastic. And if you ever wondered if you could strike out an MLB hitter, well, you clearly can. You could just stand on the rubber and hope he doesn't look up. Justin Steele had this filthy 85 mile an hour sweeper on his way to three Ks in six innings, giving up only two runs. Brady Singer had these gorgeous front door two seamers and this nasty slider, and he was up against Sean Manaya, who was really good. Manaya had eight Ks in six innings, giving up only one run thanks to his fastballs and changeups. Marco Gonzalez had five Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up only one run, thanks to his changeups. Jordan Montgomery had nine Ks in seven innings, giving up only three hits and no runs. He relied on these changeups, his curveball, and his two-seamers. Charlie Morton looked a little better this time out. He had these curveballs coming in at over 3,000 RPMs, the usual Charlie Morton stuff and had six Ks in five innings, giving up only two earned runs. He faced off against Michael Waka, who was awesome yesterday, with 10 Ks in six scoreless innings, giving up only two hits. It is fastball working, but also these disgusting change-ups. Look at the run and depth on these things. Waka does have one of the best change-ups of any starting pitcher in baseball. Shintaro Fujinami had this splitter that ended up behind the hitter. And if you wonder why a hitter would swing at that, well, here it is overlaid with his sweeper. That was the previous pitch. So clearly Paredes thought he was getting a sweeper, but got a splitter instead that moved the other way. Fuji started out well this game, but faded late, mostly due to his command. His stuff is there, but stuff without command, well, that'll make it tough to keep a good team down. He battled against Jeffrey Springs, who was outstanding again. Springs went seven innings, giving up no runs, and had seven Ks on only three hits. Springs had these sweepers and his sick changeups. Another one of the better changeups you'll see from a starting pitcher. Springs remains one of the most underrated pitchers in baseball. This year, he's given up no runs in 13 innings with 19 strikeouts and a .54 whip. Let's put some respect on his name. Trevor Rogers had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings, thanks to his changeups and sliders, and he was up against Kodai Senga, who was brilliant again. Senga's fastball touched 98 miles an hour with this cheese at the knees. But the story again of the game was his ghost forks. He had this decapitation ghost fork. Ned Stark would be proud of this one. Is that too soon for you Game of Thrones fans? He had this sword on a ghost fork, and even got some called strikes on ghost forks. I was also impressed by Senga's sweeper, and here's an overlay of his sweeper and ghost fork, and you can see how those crisscross on the way to the plate. And here's an overlay of Senga's 97 mile an hour elevated fastball with a ghost fork, and it really shows you how much that ghost fork drops. You can see why he has a 64.3% whiff rate on that ghost fork this season so far. And I really love the ghost fork emojis on the City Field scoreboard. What a nice touch. But my filthiest starting pitcher yesterday was Nick Lodolo, who was absolutely amazing. This guy does not get the respect he deserves for being an absolute destroyer of hitters. He had 12 Ks in seven innings, giving up only three hits and two walks. He had a very good fastball, but the real story of his game were these ridiculous breaking balls. We tracked this last year, and he had more breaking balls that ended up behind a hitter or hitting a hitter on swings and misses than anybody else in baseball. And he was at it again yesterday. Check out this one where he adds injury to insult. Yep, yet another hitter swinging and missing while the pitch 
hits him in the ankle. And here's an overlay of Lodolo's fastball and his breaking ball. And you can see what makes this so tough for hitters. His arm angle is extreme, and this both hides the baseball from the hitter and also creates a unique attack angle for his pitches. So as a hitter, you're really guessing between that fastball and the breaking ball in that same tunnel. And if you guess wrong, you may swing at a breaking ball that ends up behind you. Lodolo had 11.4K per nine last year, and this year it's up to 15.8. And he had an amazing 46% whiff rate on his breaking ball last year, and this year so far, 59.1. And part of his trick is he gets a huge horizontal movement on his breaking ball. He's averaging 16.2 inches of horizontal movement this year on that breaking ball. While his fastballs also have a ton of horizontal movement the other way. I know it's tough to see because of the camera angle, but his sinker actually breaks 20 inches arm side, and his four-seamer breaks 18.4 inches arm side, which is 10 inches more than the average for that velocity. And that is why Nick Lodolo is one of the most underrated strikeout artists in baseball, and why I picked him in my K-prop yesterday. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Aaron Bummer had this wicked slider that broke 17 inches to freeze Troy. Trevor Richards had these dirty change-ups. Wandy Peralta had these change-ups. Eli Morgan had this nasty slider and Bugs Bunny change-up. Phil Maton had this curveball with 3,062 RPMs, and look at that thing drop. Jorge Lopez K'd the side with this. Josh Hader K'd the side using his slider, change-up, and fastball. And note, Truist Field corrected Stephen Wilson's pitch type to a sweeper this time instead of a slutter. Well, that's more accurate, it's also a little disappointing. Bring back the slutter. Tanner Houck had this filthy splitter, slider, and two-seamer, and the Red Sox booth had some filthy fun with the term slutter. A lot of people using that phrase slutter. Yeah, that's the, that's the new pitch that all the pitchers are chasing. It's the hot pitch. It's the one everyone wants to buy if only they can afford it. Yuron Duran had this amazing 87 mile an hour curveball and 101 mile an hour fastball combination. And this overlay shows you why you would swing at an elevated 101 mile an hour fastball because it looks just like that curveball that was in the zone. Michael King had this ridiculous stuff. He had this front door two seamer that ran 21 inches back to the plate. And then this overlay of his two-seamer and sweeper. Well, that is mind-bending. Just think how hard this is as a hitter. These pitches start out in the same tunnel and end up that far apart. Good freaking luck. My filthiest pitch from reliever yesterday was this 98-mile-an-hour front door two-seamer from Clay Holmes. This had both 18 inches of run and 26 inches of drop. My man is a magician. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. The good news is the Trash Pandas held their opponent to no hits yesterday. The bad news, they gave up seven runs. And this is how it happened. Trailing, he's there, he's, oh, he dropped it! And two runs, three runs are gonna score! Friday first pitch, and he hit him away. He hit him. He hit him. He walked him on four straight, and on the way. In the dirt, going to skip past Cuero. Now a wild pitch will score another run. Chattanooga, seven runs on no hits, no errors. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg same-game plus parlay. First, I'm going to take Yose Kikuchi for four Ks or more. And then I'm going to take Reed Detmers for six Ks or more. And top it off with Drew Rasmussen for six Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 